graduates, parents, families, faculty, friends, and honored guests. As principal, it is my honor to declare open the 95th commencement ceremony of the Bronx High School of Science. I'm delighted to introduce Caitlin Yoon, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Caitlin has served as the president of the National Honor Society, captain of the girls' varsity, varsity fencing team, leading her team to win the city championship for two years in a row, manager of the boys' varsity fencing team, president of the Liberty and North Korea Club, general assembly assist of the model United Nations team, and a big sib in our big sibs program. Outside of school, Caitlin is the head facilitator for an Asian American youth leadership program, works in Assemblyman Ron Kim's district office, and teaches English at Korean Community Services. In the fall, she will be attending Case Western University. As she comes, I invite you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. I invite you to remain standing. I'm happy to introduce Mandy Lim, who will lead us in singing the Star Spangled Banner. Mandy is an avid volunteer and puzzle lover. They were vice president of the Key Club, captain of the girls' varsity bowling team, a member of the National Honor Society, a participant in the research program, and a big sib. They will be majoring in biological sciences at Cornell University on a pre-made track in the fall. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous flight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bones burst Thank you, Mandy. You may now be seated. I am now very pleased to introduce our salutatorian, Matthew Ferenz. Matthew has a GPA of 99.34. He participated in speech and debate, the National Honor Society, and is a varsity member and captain of cross country and indoor track and field. 
Matthew also worked on cancer research at NYU Langone, becoming a qualifier for ICEF. He is heading to the University of Pennsylvania as a biochemistry major, planning on pursuing a medical track. All right, Matthew, do you want to um, take off your hat for me? Is that possible? Hello graduates, esteemed faculty, family, and friends. My name is Matthew Ferenz, and I am honored to be this year's salutatorian. First of all, congratulations to all our graduates. We managed to make it all 2.5 years at Bronx Science and 1.5 years in our bedrooms. <laughs> I want to share a quote with everyone. It comes from the most influential strategist ever, 5th century Chinese general Sun Tzu. In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Now, while we're not in the ancient warring states of China, there's been a lot of chaos in our high school years, most notably during our quarantine years. From that, we saw what disorder looks like firsthand, but it can exist at any time from anything. Everything may seem to fall apart. I'm sure that's happened many times to each of us during our four years here. But when everything seems out of place and all your plans go awry, stop and center yourself. Look for the opportunity to transform your situation into a chance a chance to regain stability and continue onward on whatever path you choose to be on. To give some insight into that, in my sophomore year, we were all in remote learning. In research class, we would have typically learned how to do lab procedures, but as we weren't in person, that wasn't possible. In lieu of that, my amazing teacher, Mr. Comet, took the free time we had and taught us the basics of coding and gave us resources to further learn. I was stressed at the time, still searching for a mentor, and didn't see the point in coding as I wanted to do cancer research. But I decided to take this coding opportunity and delve deep into machine learning. I used everything that was available to me to try to see how to use it to my advantage. It happened to be a gateway and allowed me to expand my perspective on what research could entail by showing me such vast fields. Coding gave me an opportunity to help others with my research, but also to see how intersection between different fields could be gapped and how interdisciplinary many skills actually are. A year later, in our junior year, I took AP Calculus BC and really struggled with the dreaded series and sequences unit. I really didn't understand the idea of a Taylor series and a lot of the tests we were learning for the unit. At the moment, I turned to what always seems to calm and center me, running. At the very least, I was hoping it would help calm me, but I didn't think it could actually help me learn. Now, running didn't teach me complex mathematics, but what it did do for me was empty my mind and change my focus. I was able to visualize how some of these concepts worked and realized why they worked, just from a change of mind and scenery. I know that running definitely won't create that change for everyone, but finding that activity or place to warp your perspective, to switch your type of thinking, can really go a long way. I hope you can see the importance of taking initiative instead of being complacent in your dilemmas. We are the future of this world, and being frank, we are inheriting a world in need of repair. With threats of all kind threatening our downfall, with the fight for fundamental rights resulting in violence, with basic resources becoming scarce, with ignorance spreading, the future may look grim. But we have a right and a duty to help this world, our world. Don't accept a doomed fate. Don't accept what may seem to be inevitable because the only permanence in life is mutability. We actually have the power to enact change, to be change. On our climb up this mountain, we can be thrown off balance by all these threats that sometimes seem to come at us like an avalanche. But we will find a footing if we choose to simply have hope and search. Maybe we can't solve every problem or situation immediately, but what I do know is that hope is what's gotten us up to this point. And to me, that seems pretty good. Before I finish, I want to give a final thank you. I want to thank all the teachers at Bronx Science who have helped me along my journey and countless others throughout high school. I truly believe that this school has some of the best teachers and have not only taught us the subjects, but allowed us to embrace them and make discoveries for ourselves. Thank you to all the students here today. It was an honor to get to know a lot of you, and I know all of you have so much potential and a great future ahead of you. You are Bronx Science and you have capability, whichever school you end up attending. 
Thank you to my parents for supporting me and loving me every step of the way. I could have been nearly the person I am today without you. You two are my pillars. And a final thank you to everyone who came today. Have a great rest of your day and seize your opportunity. Thank you, Matthew. Congratulations to the class of 2023. It has been my deep honor to watch you grow these past four years. Some of you, admittedly a small number of you, I remember meeting when you came to Bronx Science at, at Camp Science over four years ago, June 6, 2019. Some of you I met later that summer as we spent the month of July in a student leadership class. Thank you for helping us develop the name and the course. Some of us shared a chemistry classroom and the beginning of a global, global pandemic during your ninth grade year. Others I've had the pleasure of getting to know during my time as principal, and some of you I've observed from afar in classrooms and hallways. As a group, you've accomplished some amazing feats. You've won PSAL championships in volleyball, table tennis, cross country, swimming and diving, fencing, and track. You've won countless best delegation distinctions in Model UN. Model UN. You've built functioning, competitive robots. You represent the number one speech and debate team in the country. You've created beautiful and move, moving art together. You've per participated in an active student government and led over 80 clubs. Among you are 47 National Merit finalists. 158 of you have completed high-level independent research projects, and six of you have been named Regeneron talent, Science Talent Scholars. I could go on and on with your accomplishments. You have done great things during your four years of science. More remarkable than your accomplishments are the skills you've developed, the skills that underlie those accomplishments and that prepare you for what's ahead. With the guidance of your teachers, through your classes and extracurricular activities, you've developed an important toolbox. You're keen observers of the world around you. You ask important questions about how and why. You seek to uncover the power structures that support the world as it is, and to challenge those structures when you find them to be unjust. You are scientific thinkers, testing hypotheses and arguments, and using data to draw strong, solid conclusions. And you've learned to communicate your ideas with clarity and passion. Those well-developed skills have already made you leaders, and I'm proud of you. But just like your accomplishments, these skills don't encapsulate who you are. I've also had the pleasure of watching you grow in your relationships these past four years. Some of you are still besties with your day one ride or die. That's been really special to watch. Others of you took longer to develop those what will be lifelong connections, or you've moved in and out of friend groups like the social butterflies that you are. And I've seen some bumps in the road as you've navigated these relationships. But even with your challenges, disagreements of the, about the direction of club leadership, disappointments about the decisions of another, or deep-rooted disagreements about the world, I see you treat one another with empathy and care. You try to understand the perspective of another. You move forward looking for the strongest future together. You leave today the member of an elite group, a group I can only look on with envy, alumni of the Bronx High School of Science. As you, as you embark as alumni, I'm confident that you'll continue the amazing legacy of that group. You join accomplished leaders in science, medicine, public service, industry, and the arts. I won't quote for you for the 10,000th time the number of Nobel Prize and Pulitzer Prize winners to graduate from science. But I know you will do that legacy proud. Not just because you're brilliant, and you are, and not just because you've developed a broad set of competencies, and you have, 
but also because I know you will respect the dignity of everyone you meet and those who you don't meet, but whose lives you will affect with your work. I know that you will use your powers for good. Please continue to connect with Bronx Science. Let us know about the amazing things that you're doing in the years to come. Once again, I'm proud of you and so grateful to know you. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce Kayla Hubbard, our student organization chief operating officer, who will introduce our special guest graduation speaker. Kayla is a student with a passion for creating inclusive and diverse spaces for, science in Bronx, for students in Bronx science. In her time here, she created the first Black History Month gallery, the first Women's History Month gallery, the first Asian American and Island Pacifica ex exhibition, and hosted annual Toys, Cans, and Coats drives in Bronx Science for three years, accumulating over 8,000 donations. She hopes, and she has, left a legacy of emphasizing the importance of diversity and community at our school. She, attend, she is attending the University of Michigan Ross School of Business, where, where she will be studying business management. Hello everyone, my name is Kayla Hubbard and it is an honor to be introducing such a distinguished honors audience this afternoon. It is my honor to have the opportunity to introduce such a powerful, passionate, and honorable woman who will be speaking to us. Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield is truly a remarkable individual who has served internationally in the 35 years she has worked in the United States Foreign Service. From her work in African American affairs to her assignments in Switzerland, Nigeria, Liberia, Pakistan, Rwanda, Kenya, the Gambia, and Jamaica, her impact can be truly felt worldwide. Throughout her career, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield has demonstrated their unwavering commitment to the success and well-being of developing countries, as well as the importance of humanity in global affairs. Born in Baker, Louisiana in 1952, Miss Thomas Greenfield graduated from a segregated high school in the Deep South. Her mother and father were both unable to be granted the gift of a full education as we all hear today. Her experiences with adversity and discrimination started at a young age, and this, coupled with her early encounters with local Peace Corps officials, greatly influenced her passion towards equity, humanity, and forest service. From her first days in office under President Biden, she made sure to address the importance of humanity and understanding. One impactful quote stood out to me in which she stated, when we use these technical terms, food security, acute malnutrition, conflict-induced hunger, let us not forget what they really mean. We're talking about raw humanity here. We are talking about pure suffering. We are talking about real people. After graduating with her bachelor's degree in political science at the Louisiana State University in 1974, and then her master's degree in political science at the University of Wisconsin in 1975, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield commenced her lifelong commitment to political affairs. After completing her foreign service exam, she joined the U.S. Foreign Service and received her first assignment in 1982 at the U.S. Embassy in Jamaica. She then went on to serve diplomatic positions in Lagos, Nigeria, Banjul, the Gambia, and Kenya, and then served in the American embassies in Pakistan and Switzerland. Most notably, she served in Geneva, working to promote U.S. interests and agency, and then from 2013 to 2017, she served as the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs. Nominated by the Biden administration as the United States Ambassador to the United Nations and confirmed on February 23rd, 2021, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield continues to serve and represent the United States in foreign affairs. While I could continue to list the accolades and achievements of Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield, I think it is important to highlight her impact and stance in global affairs. 
Ambassador Thomas Greenfield's approach to global affairs has been noted as a diplomatic approach with real human empathy and warmth. Regardless of which assignment she is given or country she is serving in, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield always treats others with kindness and respect. She leads with compassion and empathy. Ambassador Thomas Greenfield has shown that she is not only capable of building and maintaining partnerships abroad and fulfilling her job as a United States diplomat, but also advocating for the dignity and humanity of people globally. She has brought a new perspective on human rights and well-being to the United Nations. She reminds leaders to see others with human empathy. Despite her numerous accolades, she remains kind, modest, and compassionate. Thus, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield's humility serves as a reminder that true greatness lies not just in personal accomplishments, but in how we uplift and see others. So it is my honor to introduce Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield as our special guest graduating speaker today. Her, <laughs> her impact upon and dedication to improving the lives of millions globally makes her an inspiration to us all. We can all hope to lead with humanity, kindness, and humility like Ambassador Thomas Greenfield does in her diplomatic affairs. So please join me in giving a warm round of applause to Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. To President Hoyle, to the distinguished faculty and staff, to the friends and families and loved ones gathered here today, and more importantly, to the Bronx High School of Science, class of 2023. Congratulations. So you did it. You made it to commencement, and you deserve a pat on the back. And I'm serious, right now, give yourselves a pat on the back and a hand of applause. <laughs> I know how hard it was for you to get here. Bronx science is famous across this city and around the world for its rigorous academics. You passed linear algebra and molecular cellular biology. I can't even pronounce it. You made it through slushy winters and math test Fridays. You took electives as varied and challenging as game theory and animal behavior. You even survived the wasp, the seagulls, and the physics wing skunk. <laughs> so I know some mornings perhaps while you were trying to balance your many classes and your extracurricular activities, your home lives, your school life, you might have fallen asleep on the on the Ford train. That's okay, you made it here today. I saw a few of you come in a little late, but you made it, and hopefully you're wide awake now, and I hope I don't put you to sleep with my speech. Seriously, you deserve so much credit for all the hard work that led you to this moment, but the truth is you did not get here all on your own. You had friends to read over your papers, and problem sets. You had teachers to challenge you, to guide you, to push you to heights that you never thought you would reach. You had staff members and administrators looking out for you and making your school experience the best it could be. And when schoolie wasn't good enough, you could get that necessary brain food, falafel, fries, or a chicken cutlet sandwich from Tony, Jerome, Ned, or Jay. Most important of all, you had your family, your parents and your loved ones, the people here with you today doing everything they could to support you on your journey. So I want all of you students right now to turn to see where your supporters are, where your family members are, and say quietly thank you and give them a big round of applause. Thank you, parents. 
graduates, being here with you has made me think back to when I was your age, graduating from high school, and it was a long, long time ago. Uh, I grew up in the South, as you heard, and I went to segregated schools. And I have to tell you, my school was an excellent school, just like yours, with teachers who were doing their best, but at our time to support us with limited resources. And like some of you, I was the first in my family to graduate high school and to go on to college. My father's definition of success had been making sure that I had a better opportunities than he had and making sure I never went to bed hungry. So when I was where you're sitting right now, I had to redefine success for myself. If success was graduating high school and going to college, what was next? What did success look like to me? Now don't be fooled about where I stand today. You heard Kayla give that amazing uh, bio and I still like wonder who that person is when I hear that bio being read. But I didn't have dreams of being a diplomat when I was your age. In fact, I didn't know the first thing about foreign policy. I hadn't gone to model UN like some of you. We didn't have one. I was as naive as a Bronx Science first year who buys a fourth floor pool pass. So when I made my way out into the world, I had no idea what I wanted to do, none. All I knew was this, a new door had opened and a new door had opened for me and I was going to walk through it. After college, I didn't know what my life ambitions uh, were going to be. I thought maybe I might wanna be a lawyer, uh, but I decided to go on to graduate school first to study political science. When I was in graduate school, I thought I might stay there and become an academic, get my PhD. So I took a research trip to Liberia that actually changed my life. I fell in love with Africa and I was fascinated by the US Foreign Service officers that I happened to meet whose work inspired me and it thrilled me. It, it looked so, so exciting. So when I got back, after teaching for a couple of years, I changed course and I applied for the Foreign Service. And to be honest, I thought, there was no chance I'd get in. And obviously, I was wrong. When I joined the Foreign Service, I thought I'd spend a few years traveling around the world, but instead it became the next 35 years of my life. And during that time, the same pattern emerged. Instead of taking the job I wanted, I did the job the world needed me to do. When the, within the Foreign Service, I wanted to be a consular officer, issuing visas uh, to people around the world, but I ended up on a political track where I honed my diplomacy skills. And for the first half of my career, I sought out placements and postings working with refugees where we had to boil our drinking water, wash our vegetables with chlorine to kill the bacteria that I know all of you have studied in your science classes. For a while, through my postings in places like Kenya and the Gambia, Pakistan, I thought that that's what everybody in the world did. But after Pakistan, I was pushed to go to Switzerland, a very different kind of place to oversee our work helping refugees. And I didn't think it would be my kind of posting. I didn't have to boil my water or bleach my vegetables. But I ended up loving the job. Something similar happened after I served as ambassador to Liberia, and you heard, I did research in Liberia 30 years earlier, so it was full circle for me. I was the first African-American woman to be the ambassador to Liberia, with the first African woman ever to be elected a president of a country in Africa. And, and the plan for me was to go next to be ambassador to Ghana. It was my dream job. And I couldn't have been more excited. But instead, I was asked to serve in what I thought was this boring job as the director general of the Foreign Service, essentially the head of personnel for employees in the State Department. I told everybody repeatedly that I was the wrong person for the job. But I ended up taking it. 
and once again, I fell in love with the job. The next year, Secretary of State Kerry came to me and said he needed me to serve as the Assistant Secretary for African Affairs, and I told him I had more work to do as the Director General. But Secretary Kerry came back to me again and, that was, and said that I was the only person that both he and President Obama wanted for the job. So what do you do? You say yes. So I fell in love with that job too. Then I retired from the Foreign Service. I thought I was done with government, but after President Biden won the election, he asked me to help with this transition. And as part of that role, I took down names of all kinds of people who wanted to be the US ambassador to the United Nations. And I was shocked, because I didn't put my name on that list when I learned the person the president wanted for that job was me. Now that naive little girl from Louisiana who didn't know the first thing about foreign policy represents the United States of America to the world. <laughs> Graduates, my point is not to brag about myself. Uh, my point is this, even if you think you know what you want to do, let me tell you, you don't know exactly where life will take you. And if you don't know what you want to do yet, that's okay. That's a great place to be. Don't just take my word for it. Last week, in fact, this week, I had a conversation with Dr. Mae Jemison, the first woman of color to go into space. She to too told me that she didn't always want to be an astronaut. She thought she wanted to go into space, but she didn't know what that meant. And she went on to become a doctor. She spent years as a doctor in Peace Corps traveling the world. Then one day, the doors opened to NASA. She ap applied, she walked through those doors, and that trip to space, she told me, changed her life. And it inspired countless others as well. And I know that there is at least one person in this room who will also go into space, like Jay Mamis, uh, like Mae Jamison. One lesson she took away was to not dwell on past failures, but instead to look to the present and aim for a better future. She was convinced that scientific innovation in particular is poised to transform our world. I agree, and that's where you all come in. Because graduates, you're entering a world in desperate need of your help. Your whole education has been about empowering you. Now you have the chance to give back and to serve the world. Your generation is going to be the one to tackle the climate crisis. You're going to present, prevent the next pandemic, to take on global hunger, end systemic racism, address so many challenges we can't even predict yet. That's a lot to bear, but don't worry. I have faith in you, and I know your teachers have faith in you, your parents have faith, faith in you. We believe in you. You are the reason that I personally fight every day for peace and security around the world. You're the reason I have hope for the future. This school has unlocked countless opportunities for you, and I know you're all going to seize them. If you're kind and compassionate, if you're humble, and if you work hard, if you harness the power of diversity and seek out people and perspectives and opportunities different from the ones you know, and then you'll do great things in the world. So don't get fixated on one goal, on that light at the end of the tunnel. Instead, look out for the open doors on the side. Look at those doors and maybe just peek in. Little peek, go through one. You never know where you will end up. 
congratulations class of 2023. Thank you so much, Ambassador. It is now my pleasure to introduce Sud Paul, our student organization president, who will introduce our keynote speaker. Sud has served as a student body president, president of the Modern Music Appreciation Club, section editor of the Science Survey, director of the Foreign Language Debate Club, and a varsity member of the con congressional debate team. Outside of school, Sud was a senior lead of a classical orchestra, worked at Governor's Island, and conducted research on the FBI VICAP database through Harvard University. In the fall, Sud will be attending Dartmouth College. Thanks, Principal Hoyle, for your introduction, and good afternoon, class of 2023, faculty, parents, and guests. When I was asked to write this speech introducing Mickey to all of you, I was told to be straightforward and try to speak from the heart. And I'll try to do that today, hopefully designing bit by bit a clearer picture of who he is. Miller Drexler, who goes by Mickey, is one of the giants in the fashion industry. Mickey served as CEO of Ann Taylor, The Gap, and J. Crew. He created Madewell and Old Navy, which, by the way, was named after a bar in Paris. Mickey currently serves as the chairman of Alex Mill, a men's and women's fashion company started by his very own son, Alex Drexler. Born in the Bronx to working class parents, Mickey came from a humble background. After graduating from Bronx Science in 1962, he attended City College and then transferred to and graduated from SUNY Buffalo. Mickey is the first in his extended family to graduate from college. And after college, Mickey began his career in retail at Bloomingdale's. Right from the beginning, he seemed to be born with an instinct for style and fashion. And after working in department stores, he was named CEO of Ann Taylor and transformed it from a struggling business to one of the most successful American women working brands. Following Ann Taylor, he moved to California to run Gap and took the business from $400 million in sales when he joined the company to nearly $15 billion when he left the brand. While at Gap, he also created Old Navy, and in 1999, joined the board of Apple, working closely with people like Steve Jobs, and advised Apple on their retail strategy. Later, at J. Crew, Mickey transformed that company from a stagnant, unprofitable business into one of the most sought-after apparel brands in the country. All of this is why Mickey has been branded the man who dressed America. Many of you in the audience right now might even be wearing some of the brands he built, and I think that's a real impact. A few weeks ago, a few of us went to meet Mickey at the Alex Mill office, and he introduced me to a new word. It's called schmoozing. And for those of you who don't have an Oxford English Dictionary in front of you, this means talking to people in a friendly way. There are many lessons we can all take from Mickey including the art of schmoozing. We should all recognize people for who they are, not their social status or where they went to college, but instead we should look at them as a human being first. Mickey also believes that you should never forget the community that you came from or stop pushing yourself to be better every single day. Instead, we should put both of our feet forward and keep trying again and again. From his life, I've learned that our dreams aren't impossible, they aren't improbable, but rather they're important. They're what we make of it. Don't forget that while traversing what's to come next. As soon as you'll hear from Mickey, his career is a story of perseverance and endless curiosity. Mr. Drexler, you're a true icon and a master schmoozer. The entire Bronze Science community is honored to welcome you to stage right now. I was told and ordered to uh, read my speech because I always speak off the record or, you know, just as I feel. And uh, so I have notes. I'm going to try to stay with them. I was warned not to go off on tangents, but that's very difficult for me. So here we go. Thank you, Sud, 
for the introduction. And we had a chance, Sud and five associates with Alex Thorpe visited uh, me, and I'll say we schmoozed for two hours. Uh, I also want to thank uh, my main partner, Peggy, where are you? Thank you. Uh, for 50 plus years. And um, just as at uh, Bronx Science or any organization, no one alone creates success. Peggy's my partner uh, for many years, and uh, she's helped me along on very difficult decisions because, frankly, she is definitely smarter than me. Also, my children, Alex and Catherine, for being them. I want to call out a few fellow Bronx Science alumni. First is Stephen Borkin, who I've known, I think, since kindergarten at public school 76. Uh, we both were one of a few people who got into science. And the reason I like science, it's the only school you really have to take a test to show how smart you are. A lot of schools, who do you know? How do you get in? You know, so on and so forth. That test tells them. Uh, jo Langford, I don't know where she is sitting. Uh, she's in the class of 97. Uh, she has worked with me for many years at J. Crew and now Alex Mill. She is the first Bronx science legacy I've ever known. Her mother and two uncles are both alums. And of course, she grew up in the Bronx. So did Steve, my people. Anyway, so thank you for inviting me here and congratulations to all of you, the class of 2023. You made it and we all made it. And I know it's not easy to get through this place. All right. Uh, none of us could have uh, prepared for the last three years. We've lived through a pandemic. It was a challenge, a tragedy, and a trial for all of us. We had to learn how to live our lives differently. I certainly did. I learned to Zoom, uh, and I don't know how to, I don't know anything about technology in spite of Apple. We all had to adapt in our own ways, and life will always be that. Adapt in your own ways. Even without a global pandemic, high school is always a challenge. Uh, I said when I was invited uh, to speak, and it was an honor, uh, by Principal Rate, oops, excuse me, <laughs> Principal Rachel and Eleanor, uh, I called them back and I said, you know, I really didn't have a great time at Bronx Science. Uh, <laughs> And I didn't, I was intimidated, I was looking at Phillips grades next to me, A, 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 A. And uh, so it wasn't easy, and it was a hard time of life. You're a kid, then you grow up, and there, and uh, the ambassador mentioned this, there's this ridiculous pressure you feel to know right now what you want to be when you grow up. I didn't plagiarize that. But, uh, and I've spoken, I think, you have an entrepreneurial class here? An entrepreneurial class? I met them, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and I, I don't know if they remember. I said, how do you know in high school that you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to be this? I mean, if there's a love of space, uh, you kind of have a, a hint. So uh, it's a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, you might not change, but things will take you to certain places as it takes a lot of us. This moving, okay, I'll just stop moving. <laughs> um, uh, as S Sud mentioned, uh, and Alex was terrific. Is it, uh, it's all right, I'll learn how to do it. Uh, he and five other students visited Alex Mill uh, and uh, the company I worked for and we schmoozed for a few hours. Uh, I actually asked them to visit 
Okay, not bad. I actually, I actually asked them to visit. Why? I wanted to hear what the students thought I should say because they were the customers. And I can go on and on and on, but uh, I've learned that, you know, I'm here to serve you. Uh, and that's why I met. I actually, as I said, I was actually there to listen. Uh, I've spent a very long time learning the craft of retail. And in addition to retail, of people, of organizations, of who's, you know, nice, we were talking about nice people, the ambassador and I kind of bonded with five whispers. And uh, to me, everyone is a customer. How do you learn what your customer wants and how do you learn what anyone wants? You listen, you ask questions, you remain open-minded and curious. So today, you're my customers. You ask for advice, advice about life, about building a career. So I'll give it my best. First, I want to tell you a little bit about where I came from and how I got to Bronx Science. Same way Steve did, we passed the test. Uh, and Joe, which is a good way, it's black and white, there's no whatever. Uh, I was born in the Bronx, lived with my parents in a ground floor apartment. My mo mom was a secretary at a YMHA. Uh, she was diagnosed with cancer right after I was born and passed away when I was a teenager. My dad worked in the shipping department of a woman's coat company in the garment center. I didn't learn much from him, but he did instill a very strong work ethic in me. Get up, go to work, da, da, da. You know, he was tough about that. Which in hindsight, I'm very grateful for. Because, <laughs> let's say, I don't think you mentioned hard work, but you did. Hard work, you know, you need that. It's not easy. And there's always hard till whenever. I didn't like grade school that much either, uh, and I don't think my childhood was as a uh, very happy time in my life. Uh, but in retrospect, I'm appreciative of those tough years because it led me to day daydream, to live in my imagination, and to fantasize about big goals. And that was the greatest gift that was ever bestowed upon me imagining a different kind of future for myself, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, just as a reminder, but I was only a young kid. In grade school, math was the only subject I really liked. I think a lot about this, and it had to do with Mr. Barrett, a teacher of mine, which here, the teachers are the team with principal of the school, Principal Hoyle. Mr. Barrett at PS 76, I don't know if Steve was in his class. Were you, Steve? Yes, great guy. He was inspiring, he was warm, he was kind, we got along well, and he hit me with a bit of more confidence. When I found out I passed the test to get into Bronx Science, I'll never forget a so-called friend said, when he heard, he said, you're not that smart. Okay. I, he wasn't my friend for long, but just wasn't kind. Uh, everyone underestimated me, underestimated me, including myself, and it screwed up my confidence. Oops, excuse me. I'm trying to get the next, there we go. So when I started my freshman year, I figured or thought I felt it was true that everyone was a lot smarter than me, and I was always anxious about that. I recently learned a term from my much younger uh, team at work. I don't know if you know it, the Sunday scaries. I don't know if everyone knows. People know that? Yeah, okay. I never heard of it until, and, uh, but wow, I wish I knew that was a common uh, feeling or affliction. Because when I was at Bronx Science, I had four straight years of the Sunday scaries. I, if I knew and a lot of people we shared the problem, I would have felt a bit better. But, but Bronx Science made a huge difference in my life. 
Uh, without it, I wouldn't have gone to college. Everyone at Bronx Science went to college. It was automatic. So I did too, applied to a city college where I think it was just a grade average. Uh, and I became the only person at that point in my extended family to get more than high school education. It changed the trajectory of my life. So let's get back to the point. Why did you invite me here? I'm going to give you what I consider good advice. I hope you'll agree. If you do, cool. And if you don't, also cool. Um, know whatever you do, you will make mistakes, guaranteed. Some of the best lessons I've learned are from the mistakes I've made. I don't want to say the more mistakes, the more you learn. At some point, boom. And I've made a lot of them. I don't consider a mistake a failure. I see it as a learning opportunity. Uh, and if you don't make mistakes, taking risks, you're not reaching high enough. I've taken a lot of risks. I failed on a few, and I've been successful. No risk, no reward is a cliche. It's true in every part of, of the world. Now, the road to success is always under construction. By the way, I love that. I made it up I'm doing this the other day. I collect quotes. That's going to enter the quote collection. Uh, no one's path is 100% smooth or linear. You will stumble. You may have to take a different route, or you could leave the road behind completely. Number two, uh, and these are all very personal, always act like the underdog who's got something to prove. I wasn't acting, I fell that way. But, you know, don't be arrogant, don't be this, don't. I was never the smartest kid in the classroom, but I was always ambitious, ambitious and I imagined someday I might be successful. I learned on my first job that hard work, get the results, and be creative in everything and anything you do. In my world, they think, oh, creative is in fashion. Creative is in whatever job you have. Think new. Creativity I define as doing something no one else has done. And that, that's a, a prerequisite, in my opinion. And good results, as I said, will get you noticed. Because when you start in a new company, or wherever organization, you know, they, they think you're just whatever, and they don't bow down to you, which is most of the world. Uh, I was also observant. I could read the room. I learned what to do and what not to do. I could sniff out trouble coming down the road and hopefully pinpoint uh, potential opportunities. To this day, and by the way, I didn't learn all this like young, my first job or second. You learn over time mistakes or whatever, and then you trust yourself. I have a saying now, if I'm feeling it, it is. Uh, to this day, I trust my instinct and my gut. Those are two um, of my best friends, among others. Number three, very simple, be a nice person, period. Yeah, see, I, I told the ambassador I wasn't copying. <laughs> nice is good, and being likable and nice is very important to, to yourself, to others, and to all. Number four, your grades or where you went to school are not the whole story uh, because grades are an important measurement as is getting into science. I'm not scoffing at the importance of a good education, but what I know is that where you went to school is not necessarily an indication of work ethic. I think there's probably a, a re science you have to work or else you're not getting through. But so it's a, maybe an example against the common knowledge. I'll give you an example. We just hired a new CEO at Alex Mill, Roxanne O'Hara. For uh, I met Roxanne about 20 years ago when I interviewed her for a position at J. Crew. I always met 
the entry level and all that, because the responsibility of a leader is to hire the right people who have the potential. I learned that from some mistakes. When I interviewed her for a position, she reminded me about the first time we met, which I had no memory of. It was a long time ago. We talked about the boring stuff that interviews are usually made of. And by the way, she'd gone to a very fancy college. I think Sud's going there. Where? OK. That's very fancy. So, um, but when the conversation moved to summer jobs, she told me that between junior and senior year of college, she pumped gas on the dock of a marina. Uh, she passed all the other things, but there she got an A+. Plus. She knew how to work, she had summer jobs, and not, you know, entitled or anything. So, she was hired. Uh, we worked together for 14 years, and now we are working together again. Street smarts, people smarts, and instinct goes a long way, which is why I interview differently, because I want to know the person, I want to know what they've done, I want to know how they feel. Um, Ad libbing a little, uh, Kelsey, but you know. Uh, number five, no one is a success alone. In both business and in life, there is nothing more important than the team you surround yourself with, as I gave an example at Bronx Science. Whether it was at Ann Taylor, The Gap, or J. Crew, or now at Alex Mill, I've always had an incredible team, and if not, at the beginning, you build for the best of people around me who made it all happen. Surround yourself with people who inspire you, who challenge you, and bring out the best in you. So even though you might be the boss, you need those people to help you be a better leader. The same is true of your personal life. Choose friends and life partners to be your personal board of directors. People who know you well and who are supportive, brutally honest is kind of a rare characteristic when they should be or you need it and who shares your values. I've been married to Peggy, who I mentioned, for over 50 years. She's very successful in her own right, and none of my success would have been possible without her on the board, the chairman, and helping uh, and pushing and you know, slowing down uh, what uh, certain uh, goals I had. It's very smart. Number six. Never forget your roots. It's like, you know, we were like, uh, you know, brother and sister who never met. Anyway, never forget where you came from and who helped get to you where you are. Just, okay, let's see. I think I have. I'm almost over. I probably went over my 10 a lot of minutes. Now, I now have to wrap up here. So let me close with this. I had great success in my life, as people would say, I guess. And I've worked with some of the most creative people on the planet. Uh, and probably the most impressive validation is uh, with Steve Jobs for 16 years. Uh, he was taken from us way too early. Uh, Steve was a genius inventor and the best product person I've ever worked with. This is a quote, you might have heard this. The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world uh, are the ones who do. Uh, wishing you, I think that's the end. That quote ends it, oh, no, 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 I got half a page. Uh, you're leaving today armed with a great, oh, by the way, one other thing. When, when I mention uh, Roxanne's interview, I'll tell you, for me, what's really automatic, and I've learned this, it could be a great summer job, or it could be Bronx High School of Science. Because people always say, oh, you must be smart, to me and everyone else. It's a badge of honor, and take advantage of that badge. It's a very prestigious thing, uh, and, you, and it's more based on your intelligence you know, people get into college, 
they know someone, they do have good grades, they schmooze well, etc. Bronx science, automatic, that's where the smart people say you're smart, or even not the smart people. It has maintained its reputation, I just learned 95 years, and will continue to do so. So, dream big and think boldly. Stay humble, really important. Uh, and even if you're very successful, don't think you're a big shot. You know, don't act like one. Uh, keep up the hustle, take risks, make mistakes, oops, <laughs> and learn from them. And never forget where you came from. Uh, I'm not gonna touch this. Con <laughs> congratulations to you all. It is now my pleasure, my great pleasure, to introduce our valedictorian, Taj Jethwani Kaiser. <laughs> Taj, known to most as Wolfie, has a grade point average of 99.629. He's fascinated by technology and its impact on society. During his time at Bronx Science, he was research director of the Congressional Debate Team, co-founded the Cy Cybersecurity Club, and conducted computer science research on misinformation. He will attend Harvard University next fall, studying a combination of comp sci, math, physics, and government. Thank you, Ms. Hoyle, and it's a real honor to be up here. Like many of you, my high school story began with uncertainty and a healthy dose of nervousness. My eighth grade graduation had fit into a single classroom, so as I scanned into Bronx Science for the first time, I had no idea how I could possibly find my place among 750 other freshmen. And although everyone warned me that the courses were difficult, I had definitely underestimated how much of my life would revolve around academics from that day onward. I remember walking into first year geometry confident in my math schools or math skills and then leaving without recognizing a symbol on the board. Despite cramming Boolean algebra and statement reason tables for days on end, my first exam grade in that class was the lowest I had ever received. I realized then that the coming years wouldn't be easy. And now that we've all survived, I think we can agree they were not. Frankly, I'm thrilled to be done with miles long to-do lists, SAT practice tests, and SAT, or essays do the same night, or at least for the time being. Constantly working and worrying takes a toll, and I'm sure I'm not the only one using the summer to catch up on a lot of lost sleep. However, while I am relieved to finally graduate, uninstalling Google Classroom was actually more bittersweet than I'd anticipated. For one, I'll miss my teachers and the intellect, passion, and empathy they brought to class every day. They challenged us to question, analyze, and dissect the world around us while making us feel safe and heard at the same time. On behalf of the class of 2023, we truly cannot thank you enough. You did expect a lot from us, but we all owe our success to your guidance and support. And of course, I'll also miss my classmates who made the school truly special. In this room, we have brilliant researchers, debaters, musicians, writers, artists, and even athletes. Students paving the way forward in math, physics, history, and theater. There's really very little we have not achieved these past four years, even while balancing our own lives, uh, chores, and also very long commutes. Truth be told, perhaps the hardest questions posed to us weren't modus ponens or even integral calculus, but instead, who do we want to be and what do we want to do? Navigating interests and identity is a big challenge without the stress of a specialized high school. 
and two years of social development on Zoom certainly didn't help. But after years of friendships, memories, and occasionally mistakes, we know ourselves a bit better than when we started. That alone is worth celebrating. But now it's time to say goodbye. We all owe a sincere thanks to the community that comforted us, humbled us, and inspired us. From tackling those trig proofs in SGI, to collaborating on truly dozens of group projects, and debating anything and everything in the school cafeteria, I'm so glad to have met you all. You made our time together unforgettable and truly meaningful. As we walk across this stage today, our challenges will grow in scope. We're trading AP exams and cafeteria food for the unknowns of life away from home. For many of us, this means excitement and stress combined, a college roommate we hopefully tolerate, and experiences we can't even conceptualize yet. But it also means responsibility for ourselves and for others. Population growth and the housing crisis have left nearly two billion people without a safe place to live. Global warming is expected to displace another billion before we even turn 50. And despite the miracles of modern science, healthcare is getting more and more expensive every year. Issues like these and many more will define our generation. And this time we can't wait for someone else to clean up after us. But fortunately, if there's one lesson we can take away from Bronx science, it's that no problem is unsolvable, even if it takes a lot of hard work. We all have very different paths ahead of us, and I can't pretend to know exactly how our lives will all turn out. But whatever you accomplish in college and beyond, I am sure that it will be extraordinary. Parents, grandparents, and relatives, thank you so much for making it here today and for helping us get to this point in the first place. For the last time, congratulations to the Bronx Science Class of 2023, and good luck. It's my honor to now recognize the incredible efforts of our graduating class by announcing the winners of our three graduation awards. To introduce the first award, please welcome Annie Chen. During her time at Bronx Science, Annie has served as the Senior Council President, President of Badminton Club, won two Best Delegate Awards for the school's MUN team, has been a part of the Big Sibs program, and is a member of the National Honor Society. Outside of school, Annie has worked at the Museum of Chinese in America and dedicates her time reading philosophy and applying it to the civic project she's been developing with Columbia University's Freedom and Citizenship Program. In the fall, she will be attending Hamilton College. The Element Award recognizes a student who exhibits extraordinary leadership skills with outstanding commitment to the Bronx Science community. Selected by a committee of school staff, this student truly <laughs> epitomizes, sorry, um, being the element of the school. Principal Hoyle. It is my pleasure to present the Element Award to Kayla Hubbard. The Positive Charge Award will be introduced by Taba Alam. Taba has served as president of Do Something Club, secretary of senior council, treasurer of SO cabinet, and a biology lab researcher. Outside of school, Taba represents, uh, sorry, directs STEM programs for students, interns at NYU, and enjoys photography and art. In the fall, she will be studying biochemistry at McKaylee Honors College. Thank you for that introduction, it's Taiba. <laughs> it's okay. The Positive Charge Award recognizes a senior who stops at nothing to lend a helping hand to the members of the Bronx Science community. Chosen by the senior class, this person demonstrates outstanding service and commitment to both their peers and the school, epitomizing what it means to be a positive charge. 
It's my pleasure to, to present the Positive Charge Award to Shia Lin. The Adam Award will be introduced by Lucia Deck Pratt. <laughs> Lucia is an editor of Dynamo, directs the Big Sibs program, sits on the bench for the varsity soccer team, <laughs> plans events for the senior council, and leads the model UN team at Italian and Latin clubs. Outside of school, Lucia enjoys riding her bike and reading, and spends summers taking philosophy classes and working at a bakery. She's excited to attend Columbia University in the fall. The Adam Award recognizes a student who is exceptionally well-rounded. They're involved in the community through multiple outlets in a positive and constructive way and are committed to academics, athletics, arts, leadership, and service. Principal Hoyle? It's my pleasure to present the Adam Award to Kylie Morgan. Where's Kylie? Is Kylie here. Yes. Ms. Kaylin Daly, our senior class advisor, will now present the graduates. Thank you, Principal Hoyle. I am pleased to present to you the candidates for graduation from the class of 2023. Not only have the candidates met the requirements for graduation as established by New York City and New York State, they have also met the high standards determined by the faculty of the Bronx High School of Science. They have excelled in academic and extracurricular life. Therefore, I am proud to present them to you to confirm as graduates of the Bronx High School of Science. All right, if Lucia could come up. Um, I'm back. Uh, my name is Lucia, and I'm the reader for official class D01. Tayab Abu Jazar. Tasmia Afrin. Afshar Ahmed. George Alikakos. <laughs> Sabit Arko. Afnan Buyan. Will Bruner, Connor Casey, Stephen Chang, Michelle Chen, Julian Chang, Mary Choi, Howyat 
Osman Chung. Elizabeth Cologne. Adita Kosovic. Melanie Cruz. Joseph Dong. Miradin Feist. Dredza Gashi Barliu. Nicholas Gavalis. Noah Horn. Gabriela Jimenez. Amber Kuo. Jay Liang. Farah Mustafa. Anshul Anthony Novello. Seonggil O. Oh. Catherine Wong. Ada Wu. Barry Shu. Jeffrey Yang. Aiden Yi. Adrib Zaman. And me, Lucia Doug Pratt. If uh, Annie Chen, the reader for official class DO2, could come. Hey. It was good, guys. All right, let's start off with Ariz Ahmad. Zubair Mahamud. Yeah, let's go. Leanne Awan, Al Young, sorry. I suck at pronunciation. All right, Samuel <laughs> Benedict Weather. Ben Chen. Peyton Chen. Justin Chang, <laughs> Benjamin Chong, yeah, <laughs> Kritika Chowdhury, <laughs> Pythia De Costa, <laughs> Woo! Lola Dong, <laughs> Matthew Ferez. Wyatt Frieden, <laughs> Asher George, Woo! Anif Habib, Sean Ham, Inaya Hassan, Farrell Taffy Lakatos. Did I mispronounce it? Do you want to say it? Who is this? It's Farrell Jaffe Lakatos. Woo! Ian Jin. Alanis Kwan. Mandy Lim. Philip Lim. Xin Chi Liu. Aksha Mia. Anis Mafa. I, you need to come up here and say this one. Say it. Anis Mustafa Sabatini. Woo! Johan Paul. Did I mispronounce it? Johan? All right, jo Johan Paul. Aiden Swartz. <laughs> Joshua Wu. Jessica Yang. <laughs> Sultana Yasmin. And me, Annie Chen. And now, it is my honor 
and privilege to introduce William Fernando, the reader for class of, two, of DO3. Hello, my name is William Fernando, the reader for official class DO3. Mirabel Altschuler. <laughs> ben Avery. <laughs> Olivia Bernstein. <laughs> Amina Bukhari. <laughs> Donna Celentano. <laughs> Roy Chen. Justin Yi Chang. <laughs> Michu Shweri. <laughs> Yuki Dai. <laughs> Benjamin Danker. <laughs> Samantha Dong. Aman Fahim. Aaron Fu. Maria Yanaris Gill. Alvi Ishrak. Sanjita Joya. Chris Kim. Sumi Lama. Sidratu Muntaha. Hannah Nadler. Peter Rooney. Jaden Tom. Albert Varela. Caitlin Wu. Ryan Yang. Jonathan Yi. Andy Zhang. Jaming Zhang. Zichen Zhang. Amy Zhao. And me, William Fernando. It is, it is my privilege to introduce Marinella Ferrari Bridgers, the official, the reader for official class DO4. Hello, my name is Mari. I'm official reader for DO4. First up, we have Manaz Ahmed. <laughs> Pritish Anand. <laughs> Abid Ayan. <laughs> Krishti Banik. Amanda Barnco. Aaron Benote. Daniel Che. Annabella Chen. Devin Jolie Chowdhury. Mustafa Dayam. Larissa Das. Davin Donraj. Yue Yang Dong. Kanai Funabiki.
Lace Kasser Gandul. <laughs> Abdul Gill. <laughs> Namira Hossein. <laughs> Faria Islam. Jerry Jew. <laughs> Dinah Landsman. Albert Lynn. Kazuma Harvey Morris. Louis Nahon. Alvin Packeries, <laughs> Maisha Rahman, <laughs> William Stapp, <laughs> Lily Wu, <laughs> Tiffany Yam. Hannah Yan. James Yao. Anna Ye. And last <laughs> and lastly, me, Marinella. It is my privilege to introduce Vivian Yellen, the speaker for Official Class D05. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. My name is Vivian Yellen, the reader for official class D05. Tamid Ahmed. <laughs> Katya Anastas. <laughs> oh, wait, where is that? I don't have it on my list. Oh, Nushana Alam. Azam. Yeah. Dakota Barnes. Yeah. Arna Baumek. Yeah. Edward Codwell. Yeah. Elizabeth Chai. Sihan Stephen Chen. <laughs> Lucas Chester. <laughs> Humaira Chowdhury. <laughs> Sophie Demdisarin. <laughs> Chinamaram Dimaraku. James Rowe Donovan. Yeah. Tyler Sebastian Ferrant. Yeah. Evelyn Gallegos. Yeah. Kazi Gilman. Yeah. Samin Hossein. Emily Shu, Zabed Iqbal, Caitlin Junas, Talia Jade Lying, <laughs> Brian Lynn, Rafael Nehan. Tasfia Rahman. Ashina Rahman. Atif Tasif. 
Sage Wu. Mohammed Yassar. Cynthia Zacapa Mendoza. Oh, wait, am I missing one? No. Mahadir Zaman. Justin Zhang. And myself, Vivian Yellen. It is my privilege to introduce Calvin Ren Chan, the reader for official class DO6. Uh, hello, my name is Calvin Ren Chen, the reader for official class DO6. Daniel Adekwe. <laughs> and the tallest guy I know, Asafo Akan. Victor Anavien. <laughs> Let's go. Labib Aziz. Abir Buyan. Robert Kalenda. How you Chen. Stephanie Chen. Emma, Ch wait, where is this? Emma, Ch Emma Chi. Uh, Nabiha Chowdhury. Ian Desteem. Mary Dibian, uh, uh, Sandra Dunes, Lillian Flynn, Lucia Gallo, Olivia Duran, Ilan Josh Grossman, Tasneem Hussein, Alma Kabir, Jaknu Khatun. Kevin Kim, Tyler Kim, Elizabeth Langford, Woo! Carmen Lynn, Woo! Kelly Liu, Woo! Arkady Naki Homoski, Jesse Ong, Sonali Paul, Eddie Saliha. Imani Wilson. Y'all think Justin Wu. Raisha Yasmin. Irene Yimiko. And uh, it's lastly me, Kawa Ren Chan. Um, it's my privilege, privilege to introduce Anita Das, the reader for official class D07. Hello, my name is Anandita Das, the reader for official class D07. Arham Akir. John Brent Anderson. Michael Babich. Farhan Bishal. Guy Bloom. Aaron Cow, Koei Chan, Emily Chen, Carolyn Chu, Peter oh, Ryan Chowdhury, Peter Drum. Yvonne Fong, <laughs> Bin Gao, <laughs> Lotus Guo, <laughs> Finley Heesh, <laughs> Samuel Howlader, <laughs> Hannah Kim, <laughs> Ryan Kim. Bon Lau, Edward Lin, Kirsten Mo, Ethan Nan, Ulysses Ponce, Fairuz Omar Raya, John Satterov. 
Maxim Teshovich. Hania Usmani. John Wei. Angelina Xie. Susan Yi. Brian Yin. Edna Zhang. And myself, Anandita Das. It is my privilege to introduce Samantha Chaklowski, the reader for official class DO8. Hello, my name is Samantha Chaklowski, the reader of official class DO8. Raj Budracharya. <laughs> Parker Brandenburg. Hubert Chow. Marvin Cho. Jason Chen. Tony Chen. Samit Chowdhury. Sneha Das. Mohamed Diop. <laughs> Jeremiah Duran. <laughs> Ion Dutta. <laughs> Molly Ehrenberg. <laughs> Zarian Fong. Yan Gao. Jack Goss. <clears throat> Brian Hsia. Jason Jang. Matthew Kadive. Sally Lowe. Kristen Lee. <laughs> Elliot Lin. <laughs> Tahya Mumtahi. <laughs> Layla Adina Stanton. <laughs> Cecily Stevens. Marina Telgadas. <laughs> Elena Uceda. <laughs> Ryan Wang. <laughs> Frank Shi. <laughs> Yugo Yamamoto Hodges. Chloe Yip. Chloe. Yeah, Chloe. Tina Zhang. <laughs> and lastly, myself, Samantha Chaklovsky. It is my it is my privilege to introduce Aaron Kim, the reader for official class D09. Hello everybody, my name is Aaron Kim, and I'll be a reader for D09. We're now kicking it off with Taiba Alam. Afra Ankita. AJ Brown. Kyle Karkama. Sitha Chirasarn. Edison Chen. Vicky Chen. Tenzing Choyang. Joshua Choi. Joshua Correa. Oscar Deswan Ahrens. 
Justin Dutta. Nicole Fowler. Juliet Guerin. Ante Grankaric. Sia Gupta. Alyssa Su. Mubark Ilyasu. William Kalish. Avery Law. Hannah Lee. Danny Lee. Grace Lynn. Jonathan Lin. Zigang Liu. Leon Machuka. Asma Motaleb. Ray Nobuhara. Nadim Ula. Harrison Wong. Zhang Xing. Jesse Yu. And me, Aaron Kim. It is also my privilege to introduce Jamama Eastwood. Hello, my name is Jemima Eastwood, the reader for a cl official class D10, Juber Ahmed, <laughs> Sumaya Ali, <clears throat> Jocelyn Aranha, <laughs> Peter Ballas, <laughs> Julia Cartanyi, <laughs> Andrew Chen, <laughs> Ashlyn Chen, Jaken David Chen. Friona Cheng. Tenzin Choyong. Calvin Chung. Mason Duvall. Anthony Dong. Megan El Zayat. Connor Frank. Demetrios Gavalis, Anna Rose Chu, MD Islam, Adam Kamenetz, Elizabeth Lee, Jason Lin, Joseph Lin, Kylie A. Morgan. Ariel Ofri Ackman. Jack Olivieri. Orly Strickman. Kato Tafel. Yu Wang. Jasmine Wong. Jing Ying Yu. Mia Zaslow and myself, Jemima Eastwood. It is my privilege to announce Isabella Pensabeni, the reader for official class D11. Hello, my name is Isabella Pensabeni, the reader for official class D11. Mazavin Ahmed. Maribel Alley. <laughs> Alexandros Cordero. <laughs> Masuma Faruqi. <laughs> Vincent O. Hardwood. <laughs> Selena Hu. Edgar Hine. 
Taegam Kong. Dylan Kim. Victoria Kim. Jeffrey Lee. Jefferson Lin. Lynn Loom. Kareem Malik. Molly McCormick. Samiha Nasrin. Animesh Nath. Henry Olenich. Matthew Ostapenko. Jack Patterson. Tarif Pronto. Sadia Rahman. Kyla Marquez Rosen. MD Samin. Derek Severino. Holly Shortell. Theodore Smith. Adiba Tabasum. Kelly Ching. Hidehiro Tomitani. Ann Wong. Eddie Zhang. Austin Zhao. And finally, myself, Isabella Pensaveni. It is my privilege to introduce Nikhil Soltau, the reader for official class D12. What's cracking, folks? Um, my name is Nikhil Hans Soltau. I am the reader for official class D12. To begin, Menaz Ahmed. Eris Costea. Sela Amori. Tanvir Hassan. Nicole Hu. Jonathan Cantor. Mikhail Kavoris. Hope I got that right. William Kim. Adam Lee. Bao Lem. Kay Lee. My bad. Kevin Lin. Angela Ma. Eric Mann. Tristan McCrea. Sadiq Mohammed. Salma Nassar. David Pagan, my husband. Navjot Parmar. Ramesh Pereira Olivo, my other husband. Dia Prajapati. Mritika Rahman. Benzir Raida. Arga Roy. Otho Valentino Sella. Ishfak Shah. Alfred Show. Katrina Tablong. Ariana Grace Toke. 
and Sid Wang. Michelle Zhang. Eva Zhou. Zhu, my bad. And the GOAT, Nikhil Han Soltau. It is my privilege to now introduce Sean Karate, the reader for official class D13. Goodbye. Thanks, Akil. Hello, everyone. My name is Sean Karani, the official class reader for official class D13. Susan Cohen. Ian Etheridge. Mohadeb Halder. Issei Hata. Edward Huang. Nahal Hussain. Amalia Jardiniano. Nicholas W. Kim. Julia Niley. Amy Lee. Brayden Len. Kevin Lee. Tate Machado. Luke Melendez. Andrew Morrissey. Arka Noth. Alex Pan. Adrian Rafael Perez. Nafiza Rahman. Karishma Ramkaran. Ram Rodki. Zara Rosa. Niha Roy. Ashabul Shahad. Zen Su. Amika Sono. Alina Taipale. Leona Tetson. Regan Toriello. Najiha Udin. Elena Wang. Fiona Zhou. And me, Sean Karani. Yeah. It is my honor and great privilege to introduce Shivansh Patel, the reader for official class D14. Hello, my name is Shivansh Patel, the reader for official class D14. First off, Nirsen Chow. Evan Chen. Oscar Federici Grubelek. Javier Hayes. Jasmine Huang. Felicia Jennings Brown. Samiha Karim. Asuka Kowira. Andriana Lee. Mario Leon. Leeson Lee. Owen Lee. <laughs> Nettie Lin. 
Hao King Lu. Harry Mackay. Gabriel Marinescu. Kalesti Nadoya. Giancarlo Pancari. Camille Perez. Muntaha Rashid. Benjamin Ryan. Emmanuel Satkunaraja. Roni Shaham. Nazib Sikter. Saifa Soa. Neil Tov. Sal Vasello. Haishu Wang. Henry Yu. Nicole Joe. And finally, me, Shivanj Patel. It's also my privilege to introduce Stephen Te, the reader for official class D15. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephen Te, the reader for official class D15. Uh, Supriya Garung. Jason Wong. Joseph German. Reet Kaur, Charlotte Koenig, Priya Aurelis Lakram, Danielle Lee, Jungwon Lee, Tyler Leong, Andrew Lin, Patrick Lin, Dylan McLeod, Priya Miyagi, Luca Mariacone, Lisa Naksu, Noah Nordenberg, Vera I. Pankovic, Jay Patel, Elaine Perez, Mahin Russell, Oliver Ryan. Asif Shahazad. Pema Sherpa. Paul Jenna Silacham. Spencer Silverman. Farhan Strijan. Shad Talha. Nathan Tresser, Isaac Wang, Jean Wong, Ricky Zhang, Derek Zhang, oh, Derek Zhu, and finally myself, Stephen Tay. It is my privilege to introduce David Mushev, the reader for class D16. Hi, I'm David Mashiv, the reader for official class D16. Saif Abdelwahab. Uh, Leo Huang. Zona Huang. Syed Imtia Zudin. Taj Jatwani Kaiser. Safia Jobarte. Thibaut Kelson, 
Safwan Khan, Julia Kogan, Sabrina Lee, Shia Lynn, Ryan Liu, Autumn Magar Matsuoka, Mesa Mariam, Carson Michelle, Safia Niha, Elizabeth Newman, Nicholas Perinetti, Isha Ray, Andrew Rosenstein, Erica Samea, Virginia Simpson, Helen Stone, Saraya Suri, Nicholas Tam, Caddis Soy, Jeffrey Wang, Autumn Wang, Rebecca Shie, Labib Yusuf, Angelo Zhou, Yuko Zhuo, and lastly, me, David Mashiev. Yeah. It is my privilege to introduce Tenzin Somo, the reader for official class D17. Hello, my name is Tenzin Somo, the reader for official class D17. Starting off, Alexander Rush Barnes. Rachel Beckford. Samuel Bidiaco. Savas Alexandros Eleftheriou. Hoda Elkadi. Elizabeth Hahn. Rowan Hidalgo. Emma Jewell. Andres Kempinas, Brandon Koo, Jonathan Lee, Malachi Levinson, Selena Lee, Vivian Lin. Anthony Long, Zubair Mahabu, Elizabeth Mata, Mahi Mizba, Shafin Mustakim, Rosemary Newman. Ilya Papa Giorgio, Ethan Raymond, Abraham Saho, Genesis Sanchez, Maximilian Shepherd, Jaden Singh. Shireen Sneha, Zoe Stanley, Joshua Suanto,
Prayag Tamarisa Kandala. Justin Wang. Rachel Shu. Vivian Zhu. And myself, Tenzin Tomo. It is now my privilege to introduce Tiffany Zhang, the reader for official class D18. What's good, guys? Um, I'm Tiffany, and I'm the reader for official class of D18. Let's see who's in the house. Sophia Bridge Mohan. Sham Chatterjee. Max Coven. Ethan Hin. Kayla Hubbard. <laughs> Eddie Jang. Let's go, Eddie. Aman Kashwani. <laughs> Siddharth Kurukanda. <laughs> Julianne Lee. <laughs> Chelsea Lee. Vincent Lee. Oh, Yawen Lin. Oh, Madi Mahin. Oh, Calvin Matas. Oh, Ainan Mizgar. Oh, Aiden Ng. Stuti Partiwala. <laughs> Paul Petrovich Comrie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chattery Raza. <laughs> Sajid Rahman. Fajia Saiba. Adam Sayari. Tashi Sher Sherpa. <laughs> Sabiha Cynthia. Aaron Tang. Maxwell Toe. Aaron Tu. Anna Vazukevich. Justin Wang. Stephanie Wang. Sichi Zhang. Tian Guo Zhang. And lastly, me, Tiffany Zhang. Oh. It is my privilege to invite Evan Lee, the reader of official class D19. Hi everyone, my name is Evan and I'm the official reader for class D19. Susan Chen. Derek Ho. Natai Huberman. Sheikh Islam. Tasbakul Islam. Elaine Mehong Jang. Fariha Ka. 
Miles Cross. Michelle Lee. Yan Lee. Andy Liu. Jefferson Lowe. Ajmal Mahmoud. Amaya Madmuzar. Samuel Michnek. Katie Ng. Jiuk Park. Taukir Pitam. Sidiqua Quadri, my day one. Tahseen Rahman. Natalie Reed. Ahmed Saqib. William Shin. Tanvir Sayam. Sydney Siskin. <laughs> Johanna Stefanakis. <laughs> Suhana Suha. Sinyu Tang. Tarun Vianathan. Michelle Wang. Cassandra Yang. Per Ziana Schlepp. Helen Zhang. And lastly, me, Evan Yan Lee. It is my privilege to introduce Elisa Shore, the reader for official class D20. Hi, I'm Elisa Shore, the reader for official class D20. Jasmine Chen. Adrian Hong. Jason Wong. Rebecca Jiang. Ashley Kim. Alif Camilla Kulakliooglu. Sydney Lee. Fang Chang Lee. Zin Lian. Jerry Liu, Wang Mack, Mikai McCourt, Cameron Mo, Lily Montelli, Brandon No. Lawrence Park. Sud Paul. Gage Rushke. Terja Saha. Toskia Salam. Shahabir Sami. Nora Langer Sisnich. Laszlo Stein. Tommy Tang. Muntashir Tassin. Sabrina Tiger. Mizbah Udin. Sakef Udin. 
Nelson Wang. William Yu. Catherine Zhang. And myself, Elisa Shore. It is my privilege to introduce Sharish Patel, the reader for official class D21. Not to be confused with the other Patels, my name is Sharish Patel, the reader for official class D21. Starting us off, we got Uzair Ali, Camille Chen, Luke Ellerstein, Ricardo Espana, Aisha Farid, Waiz Giyash, Nora Hawk, Stefan Inderbitsen, Jensen Jacob, Elliot Levin, Yuxin Lu, Lucy Paolini, Ethan Rose, Sebastian Rosero Mayer, Sungro Ru, Mayatri Sakar, Louisiana Stahl, Adam Sultan, Suhana Sayeda, Javier Vasquez, Antonio Velez, Alif Wahibi, Aaron Wang, Amanda Widerka, Alexander Wong, Anissa Wong, Christopher Shren, Caitlin Yoon, Daniel Yu, Fiona Yu, Umaima Zaman, and yours truly, Sharish Patel. It is my privilege to introduce Alvina Rahman, the reader for official class D22. Uh, hi guys, I'm Alvina Rahman, the reader for official class D22. Uh, so let's get this started. Nabil Abid. <laughs> Zawa Chal. George Bayless. Ravnur Betty. Emily Boo. Yang Chin. Yusuf El Amin, <laughs> Sophie Grossman, <laughs> Ali El Hamlani, <laughs> Nadia Ilma, <laughs> Jana Mohammed, <laughs> Rusum Paul, <laughs> Chen Ling, Tony Chow, <laughs> Shane Rooney. Leslie Simpani, Laura Sanchez, Carlissa Satina, Alexander Soyakovic, Justin Tin, Gabriela Uspat, Ethan Weinberg, Abigail Wajaya, Joshua Shia, Priscilla Sue, yeah. Stephanie Yim, yeah. Archer Yang, yeah. Catherine Young, yeah. Serena Young, yeah. Grace Zagoria, yeah. Sean Zhang. Justin Zhang, Zhuo Shuan Zong, and the moment you've all been waiting for, finally, me, Alvina Roman. Please welcome Principal Hoyle for the confirmation of the graduates.
By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you your diploma from the Bronx High School of Science and welcome you to the Fellowship of Bronx Science Alumni. Please move your tassels to the left side of your cap. It is now my pleasure to introduce Kazuma Harvey Morris, Student Organization Vice President, who will lead our students in the recitation of the Graduates Pledge. Kazuma has acted as our SO Vice President, played for our varsity soccer team, and was a captain for our varsity track team. Outside of school, Kazuma has a black belt in karate, is fluent in Japanese, and enjoys taking care of his cats. Next year, Kazuma will be attending the University of Chicago, where he will walk onto their track team and study economics and biology. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be the final speaker today. Uh, you can find the Graduates Pledge at the back of your pamphlet, so please open your pamphlet and follow along. Is everyone ready? Okay, loud and proud everyone. We, the graduates of the Bronx High School of Science, vow to continue with a spirit of intellectual discovery in all of our academic and professional pursuits. We have learned that academic excellence involves ambition, boldness, devotion. We vow to not be content merely with the status quo, but to actively work towards making the world a better place. Using the insights that we have gained over the past four years, we value having learned how to think for ourselves rather than being told what to think by others. Through our scientific training, we have learned the value of data to back up our claims and in ways in which rigorous inquiry assists in problem solving. Through our training in the humanities, we have learned the value of art, music, and literature as a means of deeply enriching our lives. Having learned at Bronx Science the true meaning of democracy and the core values of our American society, we vow to value the others' uh, voices and perspectives different from our own. By taking these core values to heart, we will live up to our motto to inquire, discover, and create and achieve greatness in college and the world beyond. <laughs> Great. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> Classmates, I invite you to join me in singing our school's alma mater. Now we have a senior montage video with highlights of the year prepared by Wolverine TV. Yeah. <laughs> you say you got a girl, yeah, you want me, 
How you want me when you got a girl? The feeling is reckless of knowing it's selfish. Knowing I'm desperate, getting on in it, love, falling all over love. I do it till it's last.
Hamilton Ride is my appraisal Cause I'm a hooker selling songs And my pimp's a record label This world is full of demon stocks And bonds and Bible traders So I do the deed Get up and leave a climb around a sadist Yeah Are you ready for the sequel? Are you ready for the latest? In the garden of the evil I'm gonna be the greatest In a golden cathedral I'll be praying for the faith that My trophies, some are loyal soldiers while these other thorns are rosy. And if you never know who you can trust, then trust me, you'll be lonely. Oh, are you ready for the sequel? Ain't ready for the latest in the garden of the evil. I'm gonna be the greatest in a golden cathedral. I'll be praying for the faith and if you lose, boo Hey, look, my. This brings the commencement exercises of the Bronx High School of Science to a close. Congratulations, class of 2023.